God, as we listen to your word, and we ask for security and protection as we listen. We praise you and we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have our seats. Praise God again. Um, Karibuni sana to our youth service. Um, I want to thank two people who honored an invite, Nicholas and Gashui. Thank you so much for taking the time to fellowship with us today. Um, my name is Anna Kandu. Um, I am born again and I love Jesus as my savior. Uh, he is my friend and my closest confidant. Uh, this morning, I will be sharing from two uh, readings that we were read to today. Thank you very much to the readers. Um, one from Psalms and one from First, Second Peter. Um, maybe you can also have your Bibles with you, um, even though it's on your phone, uh, so that we can follow together. And uh, today. Particularly, I can say that the title of the sermon is to number our to teach us to number our days, numbering our days. Um, but I'll start at the very beginning, which is uh, that this is a new month, and so as we've seen, we have different themes that are uh, that we focus on every month. And this month was uh, mission and evangelism. And our anchor verse or scripture is in John chapter six, verse six to seventy-one. And uh, this was just an illustration of various things, um, but particularly that Jesus was the bread of life. Um, he fed the 5,000, and his disciples also asked him a couple of questions, um, but most importantly, um, the work that he did in spreading his gospel and teaching many who came to him. So back to our, our verse and our scriptures for today, and particularly uh, Psalms chapter 90, verse 12. It says that, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Psalms chapter, the Psalms chapter 90 um, is the only recorded psalm um, by Moses, and it was a prayer by Moses um, as it is, as we just read from history. Um, and here he was speaking a lot about who God was and contrasting it with um, us humans or men and our, our futility and how much we fall short. And he begins with um, speaking about God's eternal existence, God's presence throughout all the generations. He spoke of God's great power through creation and his, how everlasting he is, how eternal God is. He also spoke about the extent of God's, God's power or his magnificence in nature. But also that God has righteous wrath he is angry at sin. He is not happy with iniquity um, or our wrongdoing. You can see the picture of God, very mighty, and who he is. But on the other hand, there is man. Um, man is, is feeble. Um, his existence is short-lived. He doesn't live for very many days. Um, we are like sheep. We are like grass, we are like flowers, we wither, we come and we go. We are also very sinful, unfortunately. Um, and this is from the very beginning. So then he finally comes to the conclusion that uh, despite all of this, we must be very careful. We must think about the few days that we have gotten. Um, as you see in chapter 10, we're given 70 years but 80 is if we're very strong, but even those extra years are, are filled with a lot of hardship and sorrow. And so the psalmist is telling us or reminding us, for these few days that you have, what then must you do? To number something means to be very specific, to be very intentional about a thing. For example, if I decide to number the chairs in this room, it means that I will say, this is chair number one, number two, number three, number four, like that. Um, it's not just how many they are, but the particular number that they are. And so what does it mean, or how then can we number our days and be intentional about how we live our lives? 
as the psalmist Moses was saying in this verse that uh, we get a few days um, and they pass by, the only hope that we can have is after this life. After now we have finished this troublesome life, what then do we do? So then I'll go all the way to our, chap- our verse in Second Peter. Uh, and I think in this place, Peter was talking with a lot of intentionality. He mentions the word diligence a lot. Um, to be diligent means to be very persistent, to be very um, conscious of what you're doing. And so Peter gave us a number of steps as, as Christians or as believers. What can we do to be intentional about our salvation? Um, I think it should be in Philippians. We're supposed to handle our salvation with fear and trembling. It means it's so important for you to um, think about what you're going, uh, think about the life that is after this one, because this one is passing by. So how then can we think about or invest in our future, in, or rather eternal life? So God has given us all the things that pertain to our life, this life, his knowledge, the knowledge of him, and um, the knowledge of what is to come. And these things are all promised to us as he put it in verse 3. He has given, it, uh, given us, he has give, his divine power has given to us all the things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue. And so how then do we put effort in securing our salvation? Let me, let, me say, no, let me not say, let me say effort loosely. I know we are saved by grace, but how must we intentionally um, cater to our salvation? So he begins by giving us a few, a few steps, if I can say that. So in all diligence, add to your faith what you already believe, the knowledge that Jesus died on the cross for us he is the only way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way we can see the Father. Add to this faith virtue. Virtue is godliness, or goodness, rather. Goodness meaning holiness, righteousness, living upright in heart. So to your faith, you add virtue. Then from virtue, what else do you add? You add knowledge. And this knowledge is a truth and commands that God has given us to know and what he wants us to know, what he wants us to believe, and what he wants us to practice or heed every day. And all this is found in, our, in, our, in the word of God, in scripture. So to virtue, to our faith, we have added virtue or goodness. To goodness, we have added the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the knowledge of God, and how we should live. And then to that, we also add self-control. Self-control meaning exercising restraint, there are many things that come our way that can sidestep us, um, distract us from the path of salvation. But so we must moderate various aspects of our lives so that we are living only in the parameters that God has given us. Then from there, it is also difficult to keep doing it every day, but we must persevere. So he said we add perseverance or endurance to our work with God. It means you stand firm and steadily to a purpose despite the, set, the setbacks. So purposefully or um, with very much, much, a lot of diligence, persevere through this work with God. Thereafter, we become godly. We will, we will be godly and experience godliness. We will be more like God and what, I was, what we were saying at the beginning, um, to be like salt and to be like light. Those are things you cannot ignore. So we've added to our faith virtue or goodness. We've added knowledge. There is perseverance. There is godliness. And then from there, there are fruits that are also seen in us. Brotherly kindness. And this is, um, I think, very, very deep in terms of uh, how we care for the people around us. And above all, and to top all of that up, is love. 
So the greatest of all of these is love. So after all that, we will have love. And um, as, as we see, God himself is love. It is um, an, a, a sacrificial way of living. So we must endeavor as Christians, as we are numbering our days, thinking about the future of uh, our lives, because we, we will not be here for too long. Um, we have, some people will have 30 years, some people will have 40, some people will have 70, some people could go to 90. So it is very important for us to live very intentionally, um, thinking about eternity. But Peter also warns us that, unfortunately, if you do not heed to what um, God says, we become barren or unfruitful. We are like, we are short-sighted or blind, and we forget that we have been cleansed from sin. So do not fall into this temptation of not thinking about or being intentional about your faith. As Christians, I don't think we should, be, we should be lazy. We should not just come to church, listen, and that's it. It's a daily walk that we must go on. So as just to um, remind us or just to tie it back, that we should apply even more diligence and even more intentionality so that we do not stumble in this journey of faith. So at the end of all of this, after we have been intentional, we have believed, we have added to our faith in various ways, we have shown a great love that only, um, that is like God, then we will receive a rich welcome, an entrance um, into heaven that shall be supplied to you in it, into eternal life, an everlasting kingdom. So as you remember, we were reading in, um, in Psalms, that, that was, this is the only way that we can be brought into eternal life. So as Christians, we must be intentional. We must read the word. We must do what God has commanded us to do. And then finally, as we go through verse 12 to 15, um, Peter gave himself a task. And he said that, um, I will not neglect to remind you um, about these things. And that as long as he was in that tent, this body, he would not cease to remind them about these things of God. So as we are in line with the theme for this week, we have a responsibility as well as Christians to those who are around us to speak to people about these things that God has ordained and has put in our hearts. So we must speak out, we must uh, evangelize, we must go and touch those who are around us and tell them about God's word. And ultimately, that we will be careful to ensure that we always have the reminder of these things, even after we decease. So may you live, a, a, what can I say? Even in your life, if, if, even if you're not here, please make sure you plant that seed wherever you are. So finally, let us remember again to number our days to be very intentional with our salvation, to take it with fear and trembling, um, to add to it as the word of God has said, and Lord, we, will after, we will see the fruits of it and even see the fruits of it around us, all right? So at this point in time, I would like to invite anyone who has not received Jesus Christ uh, into their hearts at the very first, very first step, um, to receive and to have faith that Jesus died for you. He selflessly sent his son to die on the cross for you. And um, through this, we can now work towards our salvation. So if there is anyone there, um, I will not ask you to stand. In fact, I'll ask us all to bow our heads as we pray um, and even pray a prayer of salvation for anyone who has not yet believed. So if you have not received Christ, you can pray this prayer in your heart, pray it out loud. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me. That God, you sent your only son to die for my sins. I believe, Lord, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. I believe that it is only through you 
that I can see the Father and that I can experience eternal life. Heavenly Father, I accept you and your Son into my heart. Lord, I want to walk this journey of faith, this journey of salvation, this journey into eternity with you. So Lord, I surrender myself, I surrender who I am, and I surrender all my old ways into your hands, O oh God, and I accept you into my heart. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit to guide, to give me understanding, and Lord, even to walk with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And finally, as we close, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that is true, that is life, that is living. God, we ask that um, it will be in our hearts and we will be reminded of it as we walk through the week. Help us, Lord, to apply it into um, every part of our hearts, to share it with people around us. God, even to um, be salt and light because we are people can see your work in us. Dear Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done for us and protecting us even as we listen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.